Hello everyone, my name is Alexander Björk and welcome to the second part of the tutorial. Here are my hand strands which are um, UV wrapped, uh, but they still need to be tweaked. I will use them as modular as possible so I can stack them on top of each other. So, uh, so you select a border and then press W, press W and then press straight. After that you hit W again and then press out online. Uh, after that you hit pin uh, and then press J to move it around to update UE. Make sure you have live unwrap on so it will automatically unwrap for you. Then you create the uh, two sets for the other borders as well. After you're done, then you do then you do the same thing for the other hash strands as, as well. By doing so, you can stack the UVs on top of each other easier. This way you will have a, a, a way more optimal, uh, optimal UV map, since it's not going to take uh, more space of your UV map. It will be a uh, more modular and easier to, to kind of uh, use the UV space. And then you just uh, place it up top of that there. And then just uh, try to scale it and fit it within the other UVs as well. And that's it. That covers for the UV wrapping. So now uh, let's talk about some approaches how to texture hair. There are several approaches of how to texture hair. One of them is by painting them by hand in GIMP or in Photoshop with the hair brushes that you might have. And either you have made them yourself or got it from someone else. Um, another approach is to actually model a high poly hand strands and then uh, bake it on to onto a plane. Um, yep, yes, it's as simple as that. That's what I'm going to show you in this part and this approach is very friendly approach for those who doesn't own a tablet. Uh, and the third one is by combining these approaches together and would, uh, I would say this combined approach will probably give you the best result. Um, well, since you still have to tweak a lot anyway, so, so why not uh, getting a good base to work from? Uh, I, will, uh, I will put some links in the description section to other videos about how others work with their hair to give you a sense of these uh, other approaches. That I, that I can't uh, cover for this part, but ch choose the one that you are comfortable working with. Uh, none of these approaches are wrong, it's the end result that matters. Uh, now, uh, let's get into the modeling a high poly for the hair card that we'll use for baking. Uh, you can see I have different shades for each hair card in order to have variations in the texture when we, ha when we have baked. Uh, here you can see a plane with a particle system applied to it and that I, that I use for reference I can then generate a good base from it. And as, uh, as you can see I then converted the particle system into an actual mesh that I use for baking to, to the hair card. Now select your hair card uh, that is uh, UM mapped. Uh, you then add a plane that will be your reference for the particle system mm, and uh, make sure it stays within the hair card area so it will be properly baked, uh, baked later. After that you select your plane that you just that you have just added, and then uh, go to the Pargo system and hit new.
make sure you have a uh, reasonable numbers of hash trans uh, since we are going to convert uh, convert it into an uh, actual mesh and let's decrease the number all the way to something like 25 Here we have some options to play around with, we get some nice sh shapes. Uh, they are real good tutorials that explains e every technical aspect to them. And you, you can also go to the Pargo edit and change the shapes there if you want to. But in this case, I will just do the shapes and the rest of the modeling by hand. In order to convert your particle system into a mesh, uh, you go to the modifier section and then hit convert. In order to see your newly created mesh, you have to go into wireframe and there you will see it. Uh, select the mesh and then hit the Alt C and convert it into mesh. And then uh, from there you can just uh, play, it, uh, play it around by hand if you like. Uh, make sure you give each and every hair card a unique shapes. Uh, maybe with one, uh, with, uh, maybe with, uh, one with a chunk of hash, uh, hash strands, uh, another one with uh, fuzzy like shapes, and then another one which is um, separated uh, hash strands so that, that, that uh, doesn't collide each other as much. Uh, to give your final hair a more of an interesting look. Look, uh, look at the actual references of people's hair and try to break it down into a texture. Here you can see that um, uh, I'm playing around with the thickness here, but uh, make sure uh, your hand strand isn't too thin because you had to uh, you had to pay attention to the pixel density, what what's going to look nice in the baking because you ha you had to take that in con in consideration uh, for the, uh, with the pixel um, yeah the, basically the pixel density uh, and the thickness uh, for the hand strands. And now, uh, now we have uh, finished the uh, high poly hash trends. Uh, we, uh, we still don't know if it, if it's going to work, but we will know. We will know that when we uh, when we have uh, applied our bake textures to our uh, to our hair mesh. So that covers for the actual high poly modeling uh, for the hair uh, that we can use for baking. 
now we are going to paint. Make sure you have exported your hair card and your high poly first. And you can bake in Blender if you like, but personally I would actually use uh, X normal instead, since it, since it uh, offers me more options when it comes to baking different maps, and it works somewhat faster for me. So now let's uh, launch X normal, and as you can see there are lots of buttons and options uh, here, but for now we only need to play around with these buttons. So now let's get to the high definition button, and then you can upload your high poly by clicking the right mouse button, and then load your high poly mesh. After that, you, you do the same thing for the low poly. Uh, uh, there you there you add your the where, where you add your ha hair card. Uh, uh, now we go to the baking options. Uh, let's make sure first that we choose an out output and uh, what name our texture will have. Uh, first, uh, I will just make a new map and then you type in the name of your texture. You you don't need to type uh, what kind of map it is because it's going to add that for you. I usually go with the TGA format. Uh, right now we uh, need only what is essential to be able to preview our textures, so we don't have to go back and forth a lot, and it will save us a lot of a lot of time. In order to bake an alpha map, you have to go to the uh, to the options for the bake uh, base texture. Make sure the background color is completely black and that the draw using this color is checked and uh, that is uh, that it has a complete uh, yeah uh, check it, that it has a complete white color uh, this will now bake us an alpha map for us make sure that you have uh, zero for the edge padding otherwise it will make it will bake uh, ant bleeding and we don't want that uh, in uh, um, in this case Otherwise it will just make it uh, ugly and we don't need it since it's just uh, plain. So <coughs> when you have everything in place, then you just hit the generate, ma generate maps uh, button and, they, and it will bake the checked maps, uh, the, the maps that they are checked. So now we will have a normal map and an alpha map. So now when we have uh, our bake textures, we can now start mar Marmoset tool Toolbag too. Uh, two and then we will make a new material. click and drag our new textures and apply them accordingly. When you apply the textures, you just need to click and drag our newly created material and drop it over our hair mesh. And there you can pre and uh, now you can preview your texture. If you see uh, if you see it, uh, if you see it needs uh, some more work, uh, then you just go back and tweak and then go back again and bake and see what works and what not. This is uh, this is where like you don't you will like you you will work quite blindly at first until you apply the texture. So now when you apply the texture, you will see like you you will be able to see what what needs to uh, more love and what needs to be tweaked and things like that. So that covers for this tutorial. So in the next part, I will be showing you how to use these maps to do the final texturing in Photoshop and do the final touches for our hair mesh and fix it. I hope you have learned something and if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. I hope I will see you soon. Thank you for watching.